Hello, once again we're going to draw an animal and um, today's animal is a rather familiar one to most people though that doesn't necessarily mean it's um, easy to draw in fact the most familiar animals and the ones we are most attached to at times not speaking for myself might sometimes be the most difficult because most people have the clearest view more or less of what they look like so the animal in question is the so-called red panda, known to most people. And the red panda happens to be, well, unique, uh, at least among living mam mammals, as it's the only member of the uh, Aelurids still alive. So um, this family used to have more members, known from the fossil record and so on, but in general, this always appears to have been a rather small group of carnivorans. If you have old uh, sources and so on, you may well find them uh, considered part of um, the raccoon or even the small bear family. Uh, uh, I mean the large bear family. But um, these animals are really quite uh, unique beyond that. So, as you can see, there's the facial pattern to deal with first. I haven't actually finished uh, drawing that, but we'll move on to the body. Um, red pandas, of course, are very distinctive looking creatures, which means it can be quite a challenge to draw them well, and in all honesty, I think I might well fail in that endeavor today, but I'm giving it, giving it a shot. Now, I've decided to draw it in climb or walk, more or less. So it's positioned behind the giant otter and given size differences this should, it shouldn't be that far behind it actually so I'll try to emphasize that later. As you can see I'll, fo I'll focus on the outline first because the um, actual coloration of this animal of red pandas is quite complex really. Now first let's draw that magnificent tail it might actually be more upright here than is generally done, in, than it is generally positioned by these animals. But then, it's my drawing, isn't it? So, a bushy tail. Let's not forget the fact that it's got rings on it. Adding to the raccoon-like look of these creatures. Now, as you can see, I make sure to do these outlines of, this, of these rings um, rather vaguely to reflect the fact that we're looking at fur and uh, quite bushy fur at that so you'll find those outlines well less uh, clearly demarcated than uh, you might expect of course even though they look very demarcated in this animal okay now what makes this uh, what makes red panda so distinctive in terms of coloration is not just the white face, partly white face, which is quite obvious, but there's also the very fact that they have a very dark lower side to the body compared to the rest. But if you draw them like this, in this fashion, you still have to account for the fact that they're quite darkly colored mammals overall. But you'll just have, even though you don't use colors, you'll have to emphasize the fact that the lower parts are even darker. So that's why I'm emphasizing this quite a bit. You'll see the contrast later. The legs and feet are black in these animals, as is, um, as is the rear mostly. So let's not forget this foot. Of course, there should also be claws more or less visible, so I'll darken those a bit more to emphasize them. And then we've got the face, which is dark at the bottom, at the throat, and then much lighter, as I've already done for the head. And this also goes for the outside of the cheek as well as the body so hopefully oh, let's use the outline of the body a bit more 
and reflect the coloration about sorry the uh, reflect the way the fur grows so I can still even though I work in black and white well blue and white I can still show that the lower parts are rather more darkly colored than the upper ones even though they're both colored in. This also emphasizes the white a bit more. I'll do the same with the tail, but I'll have to be even less precise. In fact, there's more the illusion here of dark coloration than dark coloration itself. I'll add to that by diffusing the outline of the tail a bit more. But here we go. I think I haven't done that bad a job, though I wouldn't consider it one of my best drawings. But here we go. Oh, wait, let's put it on the branch. I like using branches. They also allow you to, well, not be that precise in how you texture them and so on, because branches can be gnarly and all sorts of other craggy have all sorts of other cragginess. Branches are very, very useful. Give some context and so on. But I'll draw the rest later. This is, well, no, actually, I'm just going to continue drawing the branch itself and show where it attaches to, let's say, a stump. That's probably, oh, that's probably better. Here we go. Let's emphasize this a bit more. Here we go. Well, here's our red panda on the branch. Once again, I hope you enjoyed. Hey, I hope you enjoyed watching. Bye.